Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. So tonight we're going to show you an update of my engine bay of my Project Race Car E46. There have been some changes and some parts that I'm trying to experiment with, so let's talk about it. Okay, here's the engine bay. A quick recap, we're running a 2.8 liter bottom end, as I prefer that bottom end for its high revving harmonics. Also, the 2.8 liter displacement, the stroke nearly matches the bore, making it a very well balanced revving engine. Uh, the 3.0 liter, good for power, but we do suffer harmonic harmonic issues in the high rev range, so 2.0 liter it is. So go right to the intake side here. We're running a, as a recap also, we're running a M56 B25 intake manifold, which is from a Sulip 325. The reason being is because I covered why in a previous video. It flows the same as a 301 intake manifold, shares the same DISA, same throttle body size. It's more simple, less vacuum ports. Overall, great intake manifold for flow. A lot of guys, a lot of guys like to ditch these intake manifolds because they think they're overcomplicated, engineered pieces of junk. Realistically, they actually flow very well if you get the 301 intake manifold or, or a Sulev intake manifold. They they flow just they flow just fine. So, what what are some new parts we have here? We have now a throttle body, which can be hard to see. Throttle body is from a M62 TUB44. It's actually a pretty big throttle body. I believe they're roughly 76 millimeter ID. Leaving the, throttle body, leaving the throttle body, we have also an OEM X5 intake pipe, which is three and a half inches from the MAF, the whole way to the throttle body. I like it because it's nearly, mad, it's nearly a mandrel bend, meaning it's mainly smooth the whole way across the uh, intake tract, besides this rib section here for flexibility. So this overall is just a very nice size intake tube, and it fit very nicely with my other mods to make it work. We're also running a 3.0 master flow sensor because it plugged right in uh, size-wise to that. We also are running uh, OEM E46 intake boots, uh, basically using them backwards, how they're originally meant to use, using two of them to route us down behind the headlight and behind the front bumper for colder, denser air. It's basically a full OEM cold air intake. It worked pretty well. Uh, adapting the throttle body to the intake manifold is a custom uh, adapter I made which I port matched. I also port matched the intake manifold to that throttle body. Now, I've never seen this done before, uh, so I wanted to be different, try it out. I wanted to see the capability of this intake manifold, how well it can actually flow with the bigger throttle body on it. Bigger is not always better, guys, because uh, now we're going to see how well the plenum volume does with this intake manifold. But I like experimenting, never seen them before, so I wanted to be different and try it out. Also, I had to bend up the old dipstick tube to make it work. However, I was still able to retain the original mounting spot, which is on the motor mount arm. So it's fastened tightly, just bent out of shape so it can clear the clear the uh, intake tube. Also, something else might catch your eye here that looks OEM is this oil, this oil separator system. I'm actually a huge fan of the OEM CCV, but for this car, I wanted to use different influences for this build. So this is actually inspired by the BMW Motorsport race engine known as the P54 B20 race engine, which I... I, I love it. It's one of my favorite BMW engines ever produced. It is a inline six 2.0 liter, which revved to roughly 9,000 RPM and made around 280 horsepower. So 20 years ago, that is pretty dang impressive. They simply use a oil separator from an E39 M5, which engine code is S62. However, the way my engine base set up, I couldn't use that one because the ports are on opposite sides. So I found the next best thing also sourced from a V8 BMW engine with the ports on the same side, mounted to the body, just relieving the valve cover and going to the intake tract. Because this, this is how they do it on the P54. They go right into the intake tract before the throttle body with their oil separator system. And also, re oil returns simply to the OEM spot, the CCV, to, a, to the dipstick tube. So it worked out amazing. That was originally mounted right here, as you guys know, but obviously due to our huge intake, it won't fit, so I had to relocate it. Still turned out great either way. Also, something new is the re-engineered uh, power steering overflow setup. The reservoir was originally up here, but I put it down here for, I wanted less distance for fluid to travel. It is mounted to the intake manifold now with the OEM fastener. Uh, you guys may or may not recognize that. It's from a certain part on the intake manifold, but basically w during resizing of that, it simply snaps onto the intake manifold. There's, there's little, there's little ledges on this intake manifold and it simply just snapped on nice. I need to paint it satin black so it looks good, but yeah, it just snaps on there out of the way, uh, proper height, so one will hit the hood and everything. But yeah, reason being is because, you, as you guys probably know, 
uh, throughout multiple BMWs, usually see this thing coated with ATF or power steering fluid for two reasons. Uh, due to fluid expansion from heat, there's also there's a weep hole in the in the cap, so it just we, this goes everywhere, makes a huge mess. Second reason being people who don't service their reservoir and replace it because there's actually a built-in filter in here from factory. Whenever they get gunked up, it doesn't flow, you know, it doesn't it doesn't process fluid like it usually does, so it just gets backed up, begins expanding and coming out of the weep hole. So I source my own fitting, install it into the cap, some hose. So if I do have any issues with fluid expansion, it will be concealed, be, it will be contaminated, I mean contained, and so it doesn't make a mess everywhere. The cooling system I've had for years, we discussed it before in the past, E46M3 aluminum radiator uh, with custom hoses I made, inline filler neck with a recovery tank, a 3000 CFM slim fan using the OEM fan controller, uh, OEM wiring, so it comes on what's supposed to. Coolant temp sensor for the fan is mounted to the radiator hose with a coupler down there. That is a coolant temp sensor from the cylinder head. It's the same resistance as the original plastic one. So we simply put it down there and plug it in. It works just fine. Reads the same. Also something quick and simple was getting the core support repowder coated or powder coated in general to satin black. It looks fabulous. Looks really crispy and nice. Also went, ahead, also went ahead and got the latches done in a polished aluminum powder coat. Exhaust side is the typical catless header. Uh, they've been bolted on forever. This engine as a whole was, was on a stand and went completely gone through all new timing chains, oil pump chain, crankshaft sprocket, every gasket has been replaced, uh, coolant hoses, everything's been done with this engine. However, I need to drop the oil pan again, which is going to be good for us because we're going, we're going to discuss the oil, oil pump issues with these engines uh, due to chain stretching. The oil pump nut will back off, especially more prominent on the 3.0 crankshaft due to the harmonic issue, which we described earlier. So... Good thing, good thing to check is your crankshaft sprocket and the oil pump sprocket and the chain replace those things. You should be good for another super long time. You can also, you can also add, a, add a chain tensioner or stuff like that. Engine bay has been repainted roughly a year and a half ago, as you guys know. Uh, turn out, still looks amazing. And then the additional wire tucking, meaning the engine bay tuck, tuck has been done. This main harness you can see now runs, comes through here and goes right the engine. That big black box has been dissected. Uh, circuit's been deleted and stuff like that. I think the things I'm no longer using. So yeah, the full engine bay wire tuck, even the harnesses that ran here for the ignition, ignition coil harness now runs through the firewall, comes in. I don't know, I just wanted a real clean engine bay. And it so far just, you know, really, really suits the part for me. Also went ahead to make the throttle body work. We had to obviously do an MS-43 conversion because this was an MS-42 car. I never really seen anybody go in depth with the swap on YouTube. So I made a video about the MS-43 swap. So if your car's MS-42, you're looking to do some cool stuff with different throttle bodies. MS-43 is a huge must, uh, so I'll show you how to do that in a previous video. It's a very long in-depth video with no ads mid-video, so you guys can go ahead and watch that freely, how to MS-43 swap your MS-42 car. So yeah, to make that throttle body work, we had to do MS-43 swap because the plugs, I'll show, I have throttle bodies back on the workbench. We'll talk about those in a second. I'll show you the differences between those. OEM oil filter housing. I'm going to obviously get an oil cooler cap installed so I can run an oil cooler. That's going to be later. Let's now discuss throttle bodies. So here is your only option if you are a 323 or 328 or MS-42 46 Once again, this is your only uh, usable throttle body. This is a hybrid which utilizes a drive-by cable and by wire. So it's a hybrid using cable and electronic. There are three cons to this and one pro, I would say. The first con would be the size. It's pretty big. Second con would be the weight. It's actually a pretty heavy throttle body. Easily three and a half pounds, I would say, roughly around there. The third and biggest con is right now in the United States, this throttle body, brand new, is over a thousand US dollars, which is insane. Now, the pro, the only pro for me is this being drive by cable, I like having that manual feeling with my foot. It makes for a nice feedback, you know, like, oh, it feels great. You know, I, I like. I like manual feelings, but however, those three cons greatly outweigh that pro. So I'll happily, if I can get rid of this and swap to MS-43 to use these throttle bodies. This one being from a 325 V46, roughly the same ID as this one that being 65 millimeter, roughly uh, ID. MS-43 plug, a lot lighter, a lot smaller, and a fraction of the cost. These brand new being anywhere from 200 to 250 bucks, 250 dollars. Uh, 
You, you can obviously find these throttle bodies used for cheaper. I'm just comparing brand new prices. And over $1,000, that is just, that's, that's ridiculous. We'll then jump to a 330 throttle body from A46, which has the biggest ID of these three so far. Flows very well. MS43 plug. Biggest bolt spacing as well. Then we go to a nice, a very nice addition to MS43 swapping. We can now use other engine throttle bodies. This one being from an engine code N62B48. This comes from a 4.8 liter V8, which is just insanely large. It's roughly 84 millimeter. Uh, it uses the same plug as MS43, which is cool for us because we can use these throttle bodies. We, re we require, obviously, custom adapter plates uh, and some shaving for some scenarios. In most cases, this is, this is overkill. You do not need, because bigger, bigger is not always better. It comes down to plenum volume, like I said earlier. So going to the throttle body, it may be cool because it's huge, but once again, you may not even notice any uh, significant horsepower increases or throttle uh, torque increases or anything like that because the, the sheer size does not mean anything really. Uh, the one that I opted for was, once again, the M60, M62TU. This one being a non-TU, has a different plug. However, it is a few millimeters smaller ID and it shares the same bolt spacing as this one. And this one's tore apart with missing the butterfly because this was my test meal or guinea pig so I can more easily port match my intake manifold and throttle body spacer. Reason being why I want, that, want this route was because I never seen this, I never seen this throttle body used before on the standard intake manifold. So I was very curious to see how they respond to a huge throttle body. It might not, might not, might not, it might not even be worth the trouble but we're gonna we're gonna experiment and find out. So that's, that's, that's the fun of it is experimenting and seeing what the results will yield us. Uh, once again, having the shave material on the top of it, shaving material on the, on the intake manifold to make it fit, and using the custom adapter plate that I made uh, to make work. We also have a full AN fuel system. Over right, here's my fuel pressure regulator, which I mounted to the engine uh, via intake manifold and brought it into the cubby where the brake, master cylinder, and booster are with a purpose angle up. So I can actually read the gauge while just standing here. Uh, it's, it's fully dash six AN feed and return of the fuel of the fuel uh, rail. I'm using an OEM M52 TU return style fuel rail. So I can use my inline FPR. Uh, we, we also, we have a fuel cell in the trunk, which was shown in previous videos. I have three parts of the fuel system. Using a 17 gallon fuel cell back there, it'll be also full AN, leaving there obviously with an inline fuel pump. Uh, yeah, when, once again, we're, we're, we're retaining an OEM DISA or DISA valve for even runner distribution through the RPM ranges. Still, we're using the OEM DSC system. I would like to upgrade to the M3 to the M3 DSC because that is actually pretty sophisticated and works very well. A lot of people with Corvettes. I actually like to steal the A46 M3 ABS unit because the way it works. Uh, this being the early DSC right after ASC, it's a little outdated, but it still responds fairly well. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoy this content, feel, feel free to subscribe to my channel as I really appreciate it. Uh, it's all I ask for in return of my time to make these videos for you. But in the meantime, I'm gonna leave here. I'm gonna make this video for you guys to watch uh, wherever you guys are at in the morning, evening, whatever. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.